Hello, it's Michael Helper with Sales Scripter, and in this video, I want to show you how to create a sales script for search engine optimization services, also known as SEO services. And I first created this other video on the worst email drip campaign I've ever seen. The salesperson that was reaching out to me sold what is probably close to search engine optimization services. So in providing my recommendations for a better approach for that salesperson, I created a new sales script for him. And here is that sales script. And actually what I created was a sales message for search engine optimization going through our brainstorming process. And in this video, I'm gonna show you going through each of these steps. Starting with the first step, I recommend you outline the key features of what you sell. And that can sometimes seem like it doesn't really fit or make sense when you sell a service in terms of talking about features. But I recommend you view what you sell, whether it's a product or a service, as being a box. And when someone buys from you and you're delivering your service, what is in the box that they get? What is everything that's included? So if you're gonna buy our search engine optimization services, we're gonna help to modify your website to improve how it is viewed and tracked by search engines. That's what we're gonna do for you. We're also gonna do on-site and off-site improvements to improve search engine ranking for keywords related to your business. We're gonna help you to create content for your website. We're gonna help you to develop a targeted keyword strategy. We're gonna help you to generate backlinks pointing back to your website. And once you've outlined what's in the box and all the different things that you're gonna do for your client, I recommend you go one step further to think about, okay, how am I different from my competition? Or if you're selling against the status quo, how am I different from the option to do nothing? So how you differ is definitely gonna be unique for you, but here's some examples that you can get ideas from for your sales script. We use AI to generate content. We have a proprietary algorithm for generating an optimum list of targeted keywords. We've been doing this since the early 2000s. And the next step in the process is to think about who are we creating this sales script for in terms of who is the target audience that we're either going after or that we're gonna be communicating with. And there's a few different things that you might wanna think about when creating your sales script in terms of the target audience. You might wanna think about different industries you're going after. You might wanna think about the size of the organization you're going after. If you're selling B2B, you can likely sell to different departments inside the organization. And each of those departments could be a different sales message or sales script. You might wanna think about the different levels of the organization that you're engaging with. When you sell to the top of the organization in terms of the C-level or VP level, that could be a different sales script from when you're selling to the frontline manager or lower level managers. But don't get overwhelmed by what I just shared with you and thinking that you have to create all of these different sales scripts. You could just use a broad audience and broad target type for your sales script, such as creating a sales script for businesses or individuals or people. And in fact, using a broad target audience is usually the first place to start when you're creating your first sales script or if you're going through our sales message brainstorming process for the first time. And that's what we're actually gonna use for this sales script. We're just gonna use a broad audience of businesses, but I wanna share this step with you because going through this step and creating a targeted audience could be what helps you to create a sales message that connects with your target audience and separates you from the competition. And the next step in the process is to think about, okay, well, when we sell that product to that target audience, what is the value that we have to offer in terms of what improvements can we deliver to that target audience or to the people that buy from us? And our goal here is to really think of probably between three to six improvements that we can deliver. And ideally, you wanna think of improvements that are specific to the target audience. And here's actually an eight point checklist that you can use as a tool or as a guide to think about how does our product or service help the target audience or help businesses? And so does what you sell help to make something work better, help to make something easier, help to decrease the time it takes to do something, help to increase revenue or income, help to decrease costs or expenses, help to improve the product that the customer sells, decrease the risk for something bad happening, improve visibility in terms of access to information or improve communications. So we don't have to think about 
an improvement in each of those, we just can use that list to think of a few ways that our product or service can help. And here's another trick is that we can actually bring back the features and the differentiation that we came up with on the last step and look at each feature or each differentiation and compare it to each of the points on the checklist and think, does that feature help to make something work better or help to make something easier or decrease time and so on? And so if we go through each of those, we might come up with a list of improvements for search engine optimization, such as we help businesses to get more website traffic from search engines. We help businesses to get their website to rank on the first page of search engine results. We help businesses to increase the leads they generate online. And we help to decrease the time that businesses spend on working to improve their search engine optimization. And the next step in the process is to think about pain points that we can help make go away when we provide our product or service. And our goal here is really to think of probably between three to six good challenges or concerns that the prospect may have that we can make go away. And again, ideally, it would be good if you can think of challenges or concerns or pain points that are specific to the target audience that you're creating your sales message and sales script for. And here's another trick is that we can actually bring back the improvements that we brainstormed and created on the previous step because for each improvement, there's usually an opposite problem that goes away when we create that improvement. So what we can do is we can look at each improvement and ask ourselves, well, what's the opposite of that improvement, which is usually a pain point or a problem? Or we might ask ourselves, what problem goes away when we create that improvement? Or what problem starts to happen if this improvement is not provided or it's provided and we take it away? So if we go through these improvements one at a time, we might come up with a list of pain points that we can help to solve with this product or service, such as the business's website is not ranking well on related keyword searches, or the business is not generating enough leads online, or it's difficult to increase website traffic, or SEO can be time consuming and complicated. And the next step in the process is to think of good questions to ask in this sales script. And I personally believe that the best salesperson is the one that asks the best questions. And you could agree with that 100%, but still not know what questions to ask. Well, with this process I'm going to show you next, this will help you to create an optimum list of questions to ask with prospects that you're trying to sell your product or service to. And we start with creating what I refer to as pain questions. These are questions that try to identify if the prospect has the pain pain points that you help to solve and still keeping in mind the target audience. But what we can do is we can bring back the pain points that we just came up with on the previous step, because for each pain point that we just came up with, there is a question or two that we could ask to see if the prospect has that. So we can look at each pain point and ask ourselves, what question could we ask to see if the prospect has that challenge or concern? So if we go through these one at a time, we can come up with questions such as, how much of a priority is it to increase your website traffic? How do you feel about how your business is coming up in related keyword searches? How do you feel about the number of leads you're generating online? How do you feel about the amount of time you're spending on SEO related tasks? Now those are pain questions. I recommend you also come up with a second category of questions that I refer to as current state questions. These are questions that try to identify what is the prospect doing in the area where you have something to sell and an example of current state questions would be, if you sold cars, you would ask current state questions such as, do you have a car today? Do you own it? Do you lease it? How many miles does it have? What year is it? How's it running? How many family members do you have? So I can't tell you what current state questions you should ask, but what I can do is provide a list of areas that you might want to think about asking questions about, such as you certainly want to ask the prospect if they currently have or have purchased something similar to what you sell, who they purchased it from, gather details around current systems or processes in the area where you have something to sell, maybe ask about people in the organization, current contracts and expiration dates. You might want to ask some sizing details ask details about the current performance in regards to the area where you have something to sell. Maybe the last time they looked at purchasing what you sell. So here's some examples. How active are you in the area of improving the SEO of your website? Who handles the SEO of your website? Have you ever hired an outside company or consultant to help you with SEO? How much inbound website traffic do you get per day, week, month? How is your website ranking on search results for keywords related to your business? How many leads are you generating through your website per day, week, month? When was the last time you considered making changes in this area? How many websites do you have? 
Are you the person that makes decisions in this area? And the last step in creating your SEO sales script is to come up with a customer example that you can share when you're talking with prospects. And again, we want to keep the target audience in mind here. What would be ideal is that you create a customer example for the target audience that you're going to be communicating with. So if you're focusing on a particular industry, it would be good to have a customer example in that particular industry. Now, again, your customer example that you share is going to be specific to you. But what I can do is provide four questions that you can answer in order to create a very concise customer example that fits into our sales script. And the first thing to identify is, is to think of a customer that you can share as an example. And then you want to think about a problem that they had before they started working with you, what you sold them to help solve that problem problem. And then think of two different improvements that your product or service helped to create for that customer. So using those four questions, I'm able to come up with this customer example. We worked with a startup business owner. They were not ranking very well on targeted keyword searches. We helped to solve that by providing our SEO services. This helped them to get their website to rank on the first page and also helped them to increase the number of leads they were able to generate online. So that is the process that I went through to create this sales message. This is actually a sales message, not a sales script. This sales message and that process, each of those steps creates what we refer to as building blocks. You have a value points building block, a pain points building block, pain questions building block, and so on. And once you have those building blocks, then it's real easy to mix and match those to create a variety of different documents. You can use those blocks to create a cold call script. You could use those same blocks in a different order to create an appointment script. You could use those blocks to create an email campaign, voicemail messages, objection responses. Now, I'm actually not going to show you all of those different documents that you can create for a couple reasons. First of all, I want to keep this video short, and there's so many different documents that I could share with you that it would make this video very long. But another reason I'm not gonna share those documents with you is that I've already done that in another video. If you go to our YouTube channel, then go to the playlist, The Smart Sales System, Sell Smarter, Not Harder. Video number four is titled Writing Sales Scripts. Picks up where I'm stopping right now. All it does is basically show you a lot of the different combinations that you can create with those building blocks. So what you can do is you can take the sales message that I've provided you here and then go to that other video to create some of those different documents. Now that process of actually brainstorming the key bullet points to create those blocks and then mixing and matching those blocks is actually how Sales Scripter works. I actually came up with the idea for Sales Scripter when after interviewing clients to create their message, I realized all of the different documents that I could create from that short list of bullet points and that gave me the idea to turn that into a web application that has places to do that brainstorming. So it's Sales Scripter, there's an area called the Sales Message Builder, and this takes you through that process that I just went through step by step, giving you a place to do your brainstorming. And then there's an area called the Sales Playbook, which is a library of documents. There's a full folder of different sales scripts. So you have a variety of different cold call scripts and appointment scripts. And you also have a full folder of email templates and a whole variety of other documents as well. Now, if you actually do sell SEO services we have an area in the sales message builder called preloaded sales messages. And what we've done is we've gone through our brainstorming process for a lot of commonly sold products and services like financial services, digital marketing, HR, payroll, IT, a number of different real estate, insurance related products. And so all of these sales messages, we've already loaded up all the benefits and pain points and questions to ask. And here's actually that sales message for search engine optimization services. So if I sold that and I signed up for Sales Scripter, I can click select here and then my account will then be loaded up with the sales message for SEO services. And I can then either modify that and build off of the answers that we've created, or I can go straight to the sales playbook and grab any of the different documents that are filled in with that sales message. Now, the great news is that we actually have a free trial that you can sign up for. All you have to do is go to our website, salescriptor.com to get started. Hope that helps. Thanks for being here and we'll see you on the next video. Have a great day. Take care. Bye.